everybody. Joyce here with the Traveling Gamblers and I am here with John. Hello, John. Hello, Joyce. And John and I are on the Celebrity Edge cruise ship. And today we are in Barcelona, Spain. We are standing in the middle of Las Ramblas, which is one of the main streets in Barcelona. And look at that beautiful statue behind us. Oh my goodness, we have so much to share with you. Let's go. Well, uh... Look at that. Okay, let's just do a quick look around. We are gonna do the hop on, hop off today. And the first thing we're gonna do is have breakfast. It is five to nine in the morning. And we are back on board today at 3.30. And all of those tents down there that you see, those umbrellas, those are restaurants. All right, let's see. Today's May Day in the United States and it's Labor Day today in Spain. So a lot of the shops are closed, but we're not sure what's gonna be closed, closed, or what just hasn't opened yet for the day. And we will find that out. When we first got out of the cab, which cost us 12 dollars and 12 euros, 12 and a half euros from the cruise port to Las Ramblas. Or La Rambla. Look at the architecture. It's gorgeous. A lot of joggers. A lot of people running. How cool. Take your pick of where you want to sit for restaurants. We decided to sit down at one of these restaurants right here. These are the items that we ordered and we were very disappointed. The food was not good at all and the prices were astronomical. This is the Columbus Monument. It is at the lower end of La Rambla in Barcelona. It was constructed in 1888 in honor of Christopher Columbus and his first voyage to the Americas. On the top of this 197 foot tall monument stands a 24 foot tall bronze statue of Columbus. And he is standing on a 131 foot tall Corinthian column. The sculpture was made by Raphael Atache, and it is said to be depicting Columbus pointing to the New World with his right hand and holding a scroll in his left. There are many, many statues and medallions at the base of this monument, and it is absolutely magnificent to see in person. Right across the street from the Columbus Monument is the old Port of Barcelona building. It was opened in 1908 and it was originally built to be used as a passenger terminal and customs building. The details on the architecture here is just incredible. We're now on the hop on hop off bus. Excited to see the entire loop around is two hours. It was $32 per person for the day pass on the hop on hop off. We will be showing you all of the highlights of the two hour hop on hop off loop. And as the hop on hop off bus travels up higher and higher in Barcelona, we can see some of the amazing views of the marina and the city from up above. It was such a beautiful day. This is the stadium where the 1992 Summer Olympics were held in Barcelona. And this is the cauldron that held the flame for those Summer Olympics. This stadium was originally built in 1927 for the 1929 International Exposition in Barcelona when they bid for the 1936 Summer Olympics. 
but that was awarded to Berlin instead. This stadium was then renovated in 1989 to be the main stadium for the 1992 Summer Olympics. This was very cool to see. And just across the street, you can see the very top of the Palau Nacional, National Palace of Barcelona, Spain. This was the main site for the 1929 International Exhibition, and since 1934, it has been the home to the National Art Museum of Catalonia. And here it is as we drive past, and a couple close-up stills so you can see a little more detail and just how beautiful this palace is. And as we continue our two-hour loop around Barcelona, straight ahead, you can see La Sagrada Familia. We will be approaching it shortly for a much closer look. It is one of the most famous sites in Barcelona. But first, we pass the Placa de España, the Plaza of Spain fountain. It's magnificent. And as we continue to ride along, I thought I would share a little glimpse at some of the architecture of the local apartment complexes here in Barcelona. This is the soccer stadium. It has the capacity for 100,000 spectators. They sure do love their football. This is the entrance to the football stadium that we just passed. 100,000 spectators. That's a lot of people. More beautiful architecture to look at. So elaborate. Even the streetlights in Barcelona are gorgeous. Look at that detail. Amazing. Up here on our left is Casa Mila, popularly known as La Pereira, meaning stone quarry. It is a modernista building that is the last private residence designed by Antony Gaudi, and it was built between 1906 and 1912. On the right side of the street is another very popular spectator spot. As you can tell by all the people on the sidewalk, I put the video in slow motion so you could have a better look at Casa Baccio. It was designed by Antony Gaudi and is considered one of his masterpieces. It's a remodel of a previously built home and it was redesigned in 1904 by Gaudi and has been refurbished several times since. Very unique and different unlike anything I've ever seen. These two buildings I thought were beautiful and should keep in the video. The one on the left is a government building and the one on the right is an apartment building. But the architecture, I know I keep saying it, but it's so beautiful here. We also wanted to show you what the streets look like for you to just walk around on your own. As you can see, there are lots of things to do, lots of other people out and about. Granted, it is a Monday. That's a holiday, and the city doesn't really wake up till about 11. This is a quick glimpse of the beachfront, which is not far from the Columbus Monument. And this is the monumental bullring of Barcelona, known as Plaza de Taros Monumental de Barcelona. This beautiful building is the Bullfighting Museum of Barcelona, inaugurated in 1914 with the very first bullfight here. It is a very interesting museum on the topic of bullfighting and beautiful at that. And now we are approaching Sagrada Familia. I would like to share with you a bit of a timeline that I found on sagradafamilia.org. More than 135 years in the making, this project still continues with construction today. In 1882, this project began with designs by Francisco de Paula del Villar. And after differences, he was let go and replaced by an up-and-coming architect named Antony Gaudi. In 1883, Gaudi took over the project, but he still continued to work on other projects. And it wasn't until 1914 
that Gowdy started to work on this project exclusively, and he did so right up until the day he died. In 1925, the St. Barnabas Bell Tower was completed, and it turns out to be the only bell tower that Antony Gowdy got to see finished. In 1926, he passed away, and the project was taken over by Dominic Sagranius. Ten years later, in 1936, La Sagrada Familia is vandalized during the Spanish Civil War. Plans and photographs are burnt, and plaster molds are smashed. The project was put on hold until 1939, when the project was taken over by management under Francesc de Paula Quintana. They were able to reconstruct some of the published plans with some of the items that they found in Gowdy's workshop along with photographs. In 1952, the staircase on the nativity facade is built and the facade is lit up for the first time. In 1958, the Feast of St. Joseph, a sculpture group, is put into place. And in 1961, a museum is created for the purpose of explaining to visitors the historical, technical, artistic, and symbolic aspects of this amazing temple. In 1976, the bell towers on the Passion Facade are completed. And in 1978, construction on the facades on the side naves begins. In 1986, work began on the foundations for all the naves, the columns, the vaults, and the facade on the main nave. In 2005, the nativity facade and the crypt are named UNESCO World Heritage. For those that don't know, UNESCO stands for United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. It is a very big deal to be named UNESCO. In 2010, Pope Benedict XVI consecrated the Basilica for religious worship, and it was designated a minor basilica. In 2016, construction begins on the Towers of the Evangelists, the Virgin Mary, and Jesus Christ. In July of 2018, the cross is placed on top of the pediment of the Passion Facade. In 2019, the first stone panels arrive for the towers of Jesus Christ, the Evangelists, and the Virgin Mary. In February 2020, the towers of Jesus Christ and the Tower of the Virgin Mary surpass the height of the towers on the Passion and Nativity Facades. And in March of 2020, COVID hits and all construction is halted. In October of 2020, work resumes, focusing on completing the Tower of the Virgin Mary. On November 9th, the 12 wrought iron stars that topped the crown of the Tower of the Virgin Mary were placed, and on November 29th, 2021, the Sagrada Familia lifted the Star of the Virgin Mary into place. This was a historical moment as this final piece of the tower changes the skyline of Barcelona. By the end of 2023, the four towers of the evangelists are to be completed, and in 2026, the central tower of Jesus. We hope that you've enjoyed all this information on La Sagrada Familia, as well as the rest of our day in Barcelona. Thank you so much for watching. We truly appreciate your support, and as always, we hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.